Hello everybody and welcome to another speculation video for Jurassic World Evolution 3 and today we'll be semi making what I I would imagine the game to look like and there are a good few features here they'll be laid out in the sort of Sid Meier's rule of thirds at least that's Frontier's words as to what they're going for in having familiar content innovating on previous content and adding standout features. So there are two standout features that they have confirmed for Jurassic World Evolution 3 or whatever it will end up being called. And yeah, let's have a look at what Jurassic World Evolution 3 may contain overall. So as I stated, Jurassic World Evolution 3 or whatever it will be called, will have two standout features. So let's have a look at two potential candidates for what that could be. Standout feature one would be breeding and babies. So there would be all sorts of mechanics added in here, such as sexual dimorphism, as you can see with these Pesutoceratops, with the male on the left looking very different to the female on the right. There would also be room for courtship animations, where a male and a female would sort of do a little dance or display together to cement their bond. There would also be infant and juvenile growth stages of initially just the film species and Can Cretaceous Chaos Theory species as well, and also any new species added in this third game, such as Cenozoic and semi-aquatic animals. So I say infant and juvenile, as we have seen both stages in the franchise before, such as the infant Tyrannosaurus in The Lost World, and this juvenile or sub-adult Allosaurus in Fallen Kingdom. There's also nesting that would be added in here, so animals would create a nest of some kind, and they would also demonstrate parental care, guarding their young with ferocity, particularly in the predators. And uh, you could even say that they would sit on the nest as well to incubate the eggs, that sort of thing. And with these babies, there's also room to add a petting zoo where uh, some of your younger visitors could interact with th these young dinosaurs and either ride the Triceratops or pat the Gallimimus and Apatosaurus. So I would just like to quickly say that the roster of Jurassic World Evolution 2 ended with 122 species and I expect every single one of these animals to return, including the Seekers of Doctor Who hybrids and the Huayangasaurus this time. So yeah, let's, ho let's hope that's the case. But um, this would basically allow us to have every species that we've had before in the game from the start. And back when I was talking about the babies, you can see that there are a lot of species that you'd have to create baby animations and, well, all the juvenile animations and models for. So I think um, initially confining it to the franchise species and the new species added would be a good start starting point. And then you could progress you could progress into like adding the baby animals for species that were added into those other games alongside the franchise species. The next standout feature possibility is Cenozoic species of course. So the Smilodon was added in Camp Cretaceous Season 4 and since then we have not seen it in any of the Jurassic World Evolution games. So I think adding Cenozoic species as the second standout feature would be a great step in the right direction considering we already have a Cenozoic species in Megalodon in Jurassic World Evolution 2. So I'm assuming we would get eight species to start off with. I would add an Avery species like Argentavis but I think that would be good in a potential Cenozoic pack. So the species I have here are the Smilodon, the Woolly Mammoth, Megatherium, Kalanken, Didicurus, Coelodonta or Woolly Rhino, Andrew Sarkis and Basilosaurus, all with unique behaviors, fur textures, feather textures, and all, all that sort of stuff. And since these animals, except the Kalanken, wouldn't lay eggs, um, live birth would be a thing that could happen. But however, instead of having to eject the baby out into the world, you could potentially do it like Planet Zoo does it currently, where the animal just materializes in. Although, I would kind of prefer some more realistic animations, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And a unique nursery would be pretty good as well, as these animals can't really just be hatched from a Hammond Creation Lab. So instead, you could probably have it as there are surrogate mothers in there, 
um, injected with the embryos, and then that the fully grown version of that embryo is released. So that could be a sort of way they could do it. Just a unique nursery to give these guys their own flair. So another possibility is the addition of semi-aquatic species. However, I don't think this would necessarily be a standout feature. Um, although it actually kind of is. But, you know, we, we do currently already have... I say currently a lot. We do already have two semi-aquatic animals in Nothosaurus and Archelon as of the marine species pack that we got back in 2023. So it's not necessarily new content, which is why I'm not really counting it as a standout feature. However, with the addition of deep water, animals would be able to go in and out of water at their own leisure. So I propose six species that we could receive. First being Sarcosuchus, one of the most famous prehistoric crocodilians. Mastodonsaurus, which is a large amphibian from the Triassic period. Caprosuchus as well would be a very cool addition. The boar crocodile, which is no longer as um, as much of a sprinter as most people would have assumed from Ark and other uh, past paleo media representations now being much more similar to a Cuban crocodile in its design. Dinosuchus would also be a fantastic addition being the most notable of the prehistoric crocodilians and certainly one I would love to see added into the game. Coolosuchus is also a very, mo very much notable semi-aquatic animal that would be a very unique addition to add, it, add in alongside Mastodonsaurus and yeah basically get these giant salamanders into the game um and lastly the fan favorite titanoboa would be a possible addition here as a semi as a cenozoic semi-aquatic species um i don't know whether it'd be better to put it in a dlc or in the base game but titanoboa is certainly a possibility there was also another um semi semi-aquatic animal i would like to potentially proposed being Leoningosaurus, which is a semi-aquatic ankylosaur, of which I don't have an image here, but um, I think it would be a really interesting addition as well to get a herbivore be a semi-aquatic as well. Now onto the dinosaurs, so and existing flying reptiles and lagoon species. So with Chaos Theory, the Beckel Spinax, also known as the Alter Spinax, is a possibility to see added into the base game. And I would certainly love to see it. I really loved its design in Chaos Theory, and would certainly love Frontier to bring this animal to life. And it's a possible new carnivore. Some other possibilities would be a new Abelosaur, as we have not had one since Carnotaurus in the Fallen Kingdom update back in Jurassic World Evolution. And I would like to propose Rajasaurus, as we also don't have any Indian species. And Rajasaurus. It has slowly become one of my favorite abelosaurs because of its uh, featuring in Prehistoric Planet. I really love this design and I think a more accurate abelosaur would be a really good addition. More Megaraptorans would also be a great addition as we only have Australovenator, but why not add the largest ever Mape Macrothorax, which was a recently discovered species from Patagonia. I would certainly love to see these Megaraptorans get more love in the Jurassic franchise as they are one of the more unique and interesting groups of predatory dinosaurs. Um, a Piscivore is also a possibility, and Ostroraptor is my top choice, as we have three Spinosaurs, so I think getting a Piscivorous Dromaeosaur would be a pretty good addition. These guys are also of a similar size to the Utah Raptor, so they wouldn't just be a small pack hunting dinosaur, they would be a rather decent sized Dromaeosaur. Now onto the herbivores. Platyosaurus is a possibility as a prosauropod and another animal for the Triassic representation, as we have got relatively little of that. And Platyosaurus is certainly one of the most famous of the Triassic dinosaurs, and I would certainly love to see a prosauropod added into Jurassic World Evolution, to Evolution 3. Diabloceratops is one of my personal favourite ceratopsians, and I would certainly love to see this guy added as we have not had a new ceratopsian since Pachyrhinosaurus in the deluxe edition for Evolution 2 and I think Diabloceratops would be a great addition with its unique appearance and yeah it's a fan favorite from those who've played the Isle I know that and yeah I would love to see this guy. Shantangosaurus is also a possibility and would uh, link in with a feature that I'll talk about a little bit later 
but they are the largest hadrosaurs ever known and yeah i would love to see how how this would scale next to edmontosaurus that we currently have however we do currently have edmontosaurus regardless so i think shantangosaurus would be a much more towering presence another possibility is a new sauropod now we got a margosaurus back in jurassic world evolution 2's um, initial release but a species that i've slightly grown more fond of is bajardosaurus or bajardosaurus not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it but when a margosaurus has its exposed spines down its neck i think bajardosaurus could potentially have the membranous skin going over its spikes as well instead and yeah it would get it would give it a distinct design compared with the margosaurus but yeah these sort of sauropods are certainly some of my favorites and i think it's actually a little bit smaller than a margosaurus even and yeah i would love to see this guy added into the game a flying reptile possibility is the highly requested hatsagopteryx a species that we could have gotten in the previous park managers collection pack however we got Thanatos dracon uh, but Hatsagopteryx is easily my favourite pterosaur, and I would love to see this absolute giant get added into the game, especially if we get walking pterosaurs that can hunt on the ground. Hatsagopteryx is well known for being displayed in those sort of sequences. And for a lagoon species, I thought, why not? Let's get another fish. We've gotten Dunkleosteus and um, Megalodon, but we haven't gotten a bony fish yet. So Zephactinus would be my choice, one of the most famous of the Mesozoic species of fish that, can, that is known for swallowing its prey whole. The initial fossil of Zephactinus actually found a smaller bony fish inside it in its stomach. I think that species was Gillicus, which sort of looks like a smaller Zephactinus. But these guys were cannibals as well, so you never know. But this Zephactinus would be a great addition to the lagoons and would really spice up that Western Interior Seaway lineup. We'd also like to propose a potential deluxe edition that we could see added into the game here. So this has two dinosaurs, an, a flying species, an aquatic species, and a Cenozoic animal. So our, our first consideration is Irritator, as we have not had a new Spinosaur since Baryonyx. And Irritator, given its recent changes, would be a very unique Spinosaur to add into the game, with its pelican-like pouch in its jaws, and paddle-like tail, it would be the most accurate Spinosaur we have in, in the game so far. My herbivore consideration is Psittacosaurus, easily one of the most famous Ceratopsian dinosaurs out there. Even though it may not look it, it is related to animals like Triceratops. But this animal is a lot smaller, um, but a bit bigger than Microceratus. So it, it, it would be really fun to get the Psittacosaurus into the game. And depending on what look it has, it could have big quills on its tail, or just the iconic cheekbones that it, that it possesses, or cheek horns, I think they're called. Um, Ramparinkus is another unique pterosaur that I would love to see, as we haven't really gotten any other pterosaurs that are around the size of Dimorphodon. Ramparinkus would be a little bit smaller, but that, that mouthful of teeth would make it a very interesting pterosaur to watch in action. Dacosaurus would also be a great lagoon species to get. I think they're related to crocodiles. And um, yeah, we have not got a lot of Jurassic marine reptiles. So I think the Dacosaurus would be a great addition to spice out that roster. And the final Cenozoic species is Megaloceros, or the giant Irish elk, as a sort of prey animal in the Cenozoic lineup. But these guys would certainly not be an easy prey item for any Cenozoic predator to take on. But so, they would sort of fill the role of Parasaurolophus or that sort before we get any other Cenozoic species that would fill the roles of any of the other small dinosaurs that we have in the game. Now moving on from the uh, unique special features, we have the innovation, which is basically improving on previous features and adding a whole load of new stuff. So the first is expanded behavior. So this Jurassic World Evolution 3 could offer some of the greatest behaviors that we have not yet seen in the previous two games. One being swimming, which does not currently exist in the current game, um, except for the lagoon species, of course. But adding deep water into the game would allow this to happen. 
climbing would also be a great behavior to see uh, adopted by animals like Indoraptor and Scorpius Rex as potential new hunting grounds to hunt down guests or dinosaurs. Burrowing as well would be a great addition for some of the small species like Lystrosaurus to hide away from the predators outside. Some other features I'd like to suggest would be a dinosaur hierarchy and species competition system, with larger predators being overall more dominant than its subordinates. Marine reptiles breathing and breaching at the surface would be great, as well as interacting with land and flying species. Pterosaurs walking and terrestrial animations, herding mechanics, stampeding and herd, herd defense. The transitional movement is basically going from walking and transitioning into running rather than just leaping into it. Um, dino dung would also be a, a cool management feature to add in as Prehistoric Kingdom currently has that and I think it would add to the realism of this game. And you could also finally say that that is one big pile of dino feces. Sauropods able to rear on their hind legs, pterosaurs perching on trees and large dinosaurs, have it allowing creatures to enter and damage buildings and aviaries, and finally scavengers picking the teeth of predators. That's a whole bunch of behavior features that we can see. Now onto species design and some specifications. So basically this would this is all to do with how the animals look and how they, how some of their systems work. So era specific variants would be great to allow you to go between the different eras of dinosaurs rather than merging eras into one model. We had that sort of problem with the T-Rex in Jurassic World Evolution 2 where they were trying to mix the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park T-Rex into one model. And so I think giving it different eras would, would work better given that we now have variants as a possibility. Um, based on Jurassic World Evolution 2's variant system. So you could have your Isla Nub well, Jurassic Park T and Lost World and JP3 T-Rex, your Jurassic World um, Fallen Kingdom and Dominion T-Rex, although the Dominion T-Rex could potentially be its own variant, uh, if I'm going to be honest, um, because of its design differences to the past Jurassic World T-Rexes. And um, also the feathered T-Rex from 65 million years ago in the prologue. So that is a possibility as well. Giving some of the de designs of film species more accuracy would be much better, especially the Carnotaurus. The Carnotaurus design in Fallen Kingdom is an absolute masterpiece. And I would certainly love to see it better reflected in Jurassic World Evolution 3 than it is right now. Um, Paleo-accurate variants would also be a great addition as well, as I know a lot of people are fans of accurate dinosaurs, so I would certainly love to see that as a possible option for players. An expanded diet system, adding insectivores, as well as making some existing species like ornithomimids and pachycephalosaurs omnivores, and also giving pterosaurs a more diverse range of food sources, like giving Dimorphodon the ability to eat um, insects, Tapijara able to eat fruit, that sort of thing. Sauropods able to feed on trees, um, more environmental preferences, so certain animals might prefer a desert to the grasslands, something like that. Adding the remaining Chaos Theory and Camp Cretaceous skins and variants, such as that of the Pachyrhinosaurus, Suchomimus, Majungasaurus, and Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus. Adding in genetic defects such as blindness and asymmetry would give a bit more diversity to a herd. And development of larger ornamental features such as the horns, frills, plates, spikes and club tails to add to the diversity in your armoured dinosaurs. Random sizes of individual dinosaurs would be great as well and random colour saturations and skin mutations would be great additions as well. I know Prehistoric Kingdom does that quite well with their dinosaurs having each individual be its own size and of course have a random saturation or brightness of its colours. The addition of more patterns and skin colors would also be a great addition to give a bit more diversity to how you customize your dinosaurs. Also having the option to remove the scars on scarred dinosaur skins would be great as well. So something like the Dominion Carnotaurus, um, where it has its broken horn and scars on its face. If you could remove those and just have the skin, I think that would be a really good feature to add in. Now to more advanced and expanded terrain tools such as deep water, an advanced scenery brush, so that you can select the plants that you're putting down, 
um, steeper terrain to create cliffs, gorges, canyons, and caves. Water features such as waterfalls, rapids, and geysers. Modular scaling, sea stacks, and more logs and rock varieties. Expanded pathing would also be great, able to create overpasses, bridges, and elevated walkways, as well as a grid pathing system to create plazas and a snap to barrier option. Expanded guests would be great as well, giving them unique person personalities and identities, uh, giving them greater depth of animations and just how they interact with your park, and also adding children into your parks could add to sort of the danger of an animal escaping. And yeah, it's not necessarily realistic to say that no one would bring their kids to a dinosaur park, especially when John Hammond says the children were the target audience of Jurassic Park. New and expanded biomes would also be great to add a bit more diversity into the game's maps. New biomes could include the wetlands, grasslands, tundra, and steppe, as well as the existing biomes all having sig signature looks indicative of the continent they belong to. The biomes could also reflect the original skin types from the first evolution, alpine, arid, savanna, wetland, jungle, rainforest, steppe, woodland, taiga, and tundra. And I, I would love to see that continuity be brought back, and it would certainly give us a wide range of environments to work with. And the ability to build parks across the planet would allow for signature landscapes like those of the Australian bush, African savanna, and the Patagonian steppe, all of which would be great environments to see brought into the Evolution 3. Being able to create custom maps would also be great as well. Being able to create maps of various sizes, even your own islands, and having the ability to utilize entire islands would be a great opportunity to create complete Jurassic World or Jurassic Park recreations. There could also be options to place natural lagoons and being able to outline where you would want would allow the buildable area to be. And also select how many mountains, canyons, cliff sides, other ge geographical features would be present on the map that you are creating. Having a longer campaign would also be a great step in the right direction for Evolution 3 as the campaign that we had for Jurassic World Evolution 3 was was very short. It, it, it went by very quickly, I will admit. So giving it giving it a similar length to Jurassic World Evolution's campaign, even though that was quite long, um, but keeping it interesting and active enough to keep the player going would be great as well. And giving us the opportunity to interact with the whole roster of, anim of animals while going along with a uh, pretty good story. I think that that's what would make a pretty good Jurassic World Evolution 3 campaign. A proper first person mode would be great as well, being able to use certain tools that staff members or guests would be able to use, such as like a tranquilizer rifle or a torch, that sort of thing and be able to get a first person experience to what it's like to being hunted by a dinosaur. That would be a very interesting feature to get in. More realistic combat and, at, and attacks and hunting would also be a great improvement over the, over the previous two evolutions, making it more random with it at minimum four possible outcomes. And they could function somewhat more, and fights could function somewhat more like hunts, at least when it comes to prey animals like ceratopsians and hadrosaurs. One outcome would be the predator takes down the prey, the second would be the prey killing or severely injuring the predator, the third would be the predator being forced to retreat, and the fourth outcome would be where the prey performs an action that allows it to escape, whether it knocks the predator over, trips it up, or the prey would be able to get away um, in some other fashion. Giving the ability for hadrosaurs, sauropods, and ornithomimids to fight back. Um, adding more film accurate combat sequences, such as with the Giganotosaurus and the T Rex, or the Carnotaurus vs. the Cynoceratops. Predators carrying or dragging prey, like you can see with the Scorpius Rex here from that scene in Camp Cretaceous Season 3. Predators stalking prey. Scavengers swarming, so Compies being able to swarm on a weakened animal. Dynamic chases on guests or vehicles and other animals, so potentially the predators will leap over rocks, smash through logs, that sort of thing. 
Um, dynamic vehicle attacks would also be great, so such as the Indominus Rex grabbing the gyrosphere in its jaws and smashing it onto the ground. That would certainly make the gyrospheres far less invincible. <laughs> um, also adding locational damage would also be a good step in the right direction as scars appear on the animals currently where they haven't even been hit and, in, and have been scarred in ways that whatever animal they're fighting could not possibly have inflicted. And visible injuries would be a great addition as well, such as having a visibly broken leg, or a broken horn, or missing teeth, that sort of thing. Expanding Averys and Lagoons, being able to change their height, or in the Lagoons case, their depth. The, being able to create custom outlines for your Lagoons, sort of how Planet Coaster 2 is currently working with their, with their pool system, where you can create your own outline for your pools and that's how it works basically. I haven't really paid too much attention to that but there are a lot of cool features in that game. The ability to change the walls, add ramps and have gates and fences that can split the la la lagoon sections to house more aquatic animals in the same body of water would be a great step in the right direction for more versatile lagoons. A proper site B mode would be great as well. Having a completely wild island with derelict buildings, that and just completely wild landscapes. And not having to create a hammer creation lab just to release dinosaurs would be a great addition as well. So you could just potentially place the dinosaurs on the map as you go, with in certain ages or the skins that you that you want in particular. Being able to create a proper biological preserve completely free of humans and just letting the, the animals interact and allow a natural system to just to take place. More attractions would also be a great feature in this game. So allowing us to you create the Cretaceous Cruise, um, have a gondola ride, a balloon tour, ferry entrances, uh, like ferry entrances. So say a boat able to deliver guests to your island rather than helicopters. Um, T-Rex Kingdom, the Indominus Rex Paddock, Velociraptor Compound, Gentle Giants Petting Zoo, um, even a zipline. Well, actually, no, we have a zipline, damn it. <laughs> but that sort of thing, maybe even a packy arena. All those sort of attractions, the aquatic park, there's a lot to choose from to add in to Jurassic World Evolution 3. Some other features that I would like to suggest here would be new fence types. Jurassic World or pa Jurassic World Park pieces, so sort of like the, the walls, the archways, that sort of thing. Statues, skeletons, and holographic displays for every species. More live prey feeder options and more kinds of natural food, so stuff like the deer, the cow feeder, ammonites and squid in the lagoons, fish just swimming in the rivers, maybe even adding lizards and termite mounds. Enrichment items, animal shelters would add to the welfare of your dinosaurs. Um, Adding modern animals into the maps would be a really cool feature as well. So being able to have a dinosaur potentially fight a bear or an Allosaurus hunt down bison, that would be cool. New natural disasters would also be great additions. So potentially forest fires, locust plagues, um, an earthquake would be an interesting scenario. Um, great diversity of the ACU and Ranger team equipment. So and just how they perform their, their jobs. So allowing them to use motorcycles, quad bikes, or ground teams. So send out a platoon of, of troopers instead of taking vehicles, especially for dinosaurs in a much denser location. And a shoot to kill feature would be great in terms of if a dinosaur has escaped and it's causing a lot of damage, you simply just have to, you have to put it down. Um, that it, it could come to that potentially. Uh, monorail gates that work would be a great feature as well and maintenance tunnels would also be a cool way to get your teams around your parks a lot quicker without your range teams having to go and meander through the how you construct your park if it's a very complex park that that jeep is going to be going for a while and if the dinosaur that's tending to dies or something yeah it wouldn't have been able to get there in time so maintenance tunnels having entrances and and tunnels going through would certainly allow the vehicles to do their jobs a lot easier. 
So that was all the features, and now I'd just like to say potential DLCs that we could see added. So a South American species pack would be a great addition. So he's sort of going more continental this time around, and some eras would be a great step in the right direction. So South American species pack would add species like the Mapasaurus, the Argentinosaurus, and potentially Stegoros as well. The Asian species pack uh, could potentially add highly requested animals like Protoceratops and Yangchuanosaurus as well as some Cenozoic species like that of Paraceratherium. An Australian species pack would be great to would be a great place to add the Australian megafauna, such as that of Megalania, Thylacolio, Diprotodon, and Procoptodon. One of my most requested species packs would explore the Permian, with species like the Inostrancevia, which is probably one of my favourite prehistoric species ever, and Scutosaurus would also be great. Other DLCs could include a dedicated Cenozoic species pack to add animals like the Deodon, the Argentavis, and Arctodus, or the giant short-faced bear. A Triassic species pack could add highly crested animals like Postosuchus, and maybe a Jurassic species pack, um, which could add Torvosaurus, Guanlong, and Pliosaurus, all species that would make great additions to the roster. But yeah, that is... Oh, half an hour's worth of potential Jurassic World Evolution 3 features and species. So let me know what you think about any, any of the features I've suggested here, what you might change, and any other features that you think I've missed that would make great additions into Jurassic World Evolution 3, or species that you'd prefer to see instead of others. Let me know in the comments down below. And subscribe as we are almost to 1.5 thousand subscribers. However, I don't know if we're going to make it to 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But we also have a new Plant Zoo DLC coming up, um, being announced next week. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll certainly be covering that when that comes around. I'd also like to explain that I have not been as active on the on the channel recently due to events taking place in my in my real life um so i hope you guys can understand as why uploads have been very much few and far between like i think my last video wasn't and wasn't from was from like first of september when i covered that dev diary for prehistoric kingdom i think that was my last video since then i've just been doing community posts um to somewhat have a presence on the channel but i'll i'll, I'll do my best to upload where i can and when I have ideas and uh, yeah I'll see you all you guys all in the next video bye bye